Hey guys and welcome to Fez Air Software. Today I'm going to do a disassembly on this Actos AR80 AR01RF. Hi guys and welcome back. If you do enjoy this content today, please do like and subscribe because you're going to be really helping me out and it's going to help the channel grow, uh, which is doing really quickly of late. Uh, so I really appreciate that. If you do want to be a member as well of the channel, it's just 99 pence a month uh, and you get bloopers, custom icons, custom emojis and uh, a private chat area on my Discord, which if you're also not a member of yet, which is completely free, please do come along and join it. I'll put a link down below in the description to get to all my socials, including the Discord. So previously then we've unboxed this Arcturus and today we're going to do the disassembly of it and have a look at what it's like internally. Now I have been impressed by Arcturus before and think their quality is just exceptional. So we're going to get straight into it and get started. So the first thing then is the muzzle brake, which I can see there has got a tiny little grub screw in it that's going to need removing. So get my get my precision set. Now we're going to start with a six. Yep. So in this case, I'm using a Torx six to get in there. It's not actually a Torx head screw. It's uh, like an Allen or X key screw, but Torx does the job just nicely. And then I should be able to unscrew it. Normal 14 mil negative thread, which it is. And we've got an O-ring under there and a cap as well. So that comes off quite nicely. The inner barrel comes to sort of about this position here. Now, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at getting off the rail unit, which is these two bolts here. So this is a number four hex bit or allen key bit and what i've done is i've kept my finger on the bolt on the underside there i'm going to make sure as we usually do keep all the parts together just so that we don't lose anything so just to confirm as well the uh, screws themselves are on the right hand side of the receiver there we go and then the rail unit just slides on off like that, nice and easy. Put that out of the way. Now it's turning to look like one of those G&G Speedsoft uh, systems. So I've got an out of uh, a gas block then that is just held on with two uh, hex head bolts, which I'm not going to remove it, but basically that would allow this out of the way. We've then just got a big beefy uh, barrel nut there that will just potentially need like a, an armor's wrench or just some big adjustable grips to get on there and undo that. And then you'll have the uh, the upper uh, the uh, outer barrel off. So if you did want to shorten it down, you can do it quite easily. So next thing we're going to do is push this body pin out then and uh, split the upper and lower. Do this off camera. So just used. Um, usually I would use a punch, but I like to make sure that it's a bit, a bit inclusive so people can do this without all the, all the specialist tools. So I've just used literally just a small screwdriver to just punch that through. Now it does appear to be one of the good kinds where the pin is on like a retainer inside. So the pin stays in the body so you're not looking for it. And when I separate it, I'm just gonna lift the uh, dust cover up and split them. Now that is a nice looking gearbox. Look at that, that looks solid. So I'm we'll looking here. There is our, what we've come to expect from Actress, this sort of the black, is it stainless steel in a barrel? That is absolutely spotlessly clean as well. I don't know if I can get a view. There we go. That thing is absolutely spotlessly clean. Uh, and the adjustment, I didn't even realize that the little dial on here, hopefully you can see that has actually got numbers on it showing you that I have currently dialed it up to 15. Now, bizarrely, that, I can find it, there we go. 
that's the maximum hop. That's not an awful lot of hop, yet it was really effectively hopping out well to easily 50 meters, but there doesn't seem to be an awful lot of hop in there. So if you're gonna hop heavier BBs than 0.25, you may want to put uh, a better um, tensioner in there. Um, I get told off sometimes uh, by certain people if I call it a nub, apparently you should call it a tensioner, the little bit that goes in and pushes down on the rubber. So next I'm gonna remove the stock. So as we did in the unboxing, we're just gonna extend the stock out and then we're just gonna pull this pin down from both sides to release the stock off there. So that's the stock out of the way. We've now got the end cap to remove. I'll get the wiring out. And looking down there, it's a little bit different. Just that unscrew. Looks like I might need. I was expecting basically a screw down here to undo to take this off but it looks like I suspect that this basically is um, screwed in like you would expect a, um, a gas blowback sort of buffer tube to be um, so I'm just having a look and figuring it out just I have used in the end my Amra's wrench which has loosened that up a little bit that now moves a little bit aha and then this there we go that comes out of the way and that literally wow that's I'm not gonna lie I am impressed with that that's pretty damn clever wow look at that right okay that's pretty clever so you've got like a ridge on here that sits into this gap here that basically helps to lock all of this down and stop it moving. Um, as you can see there, look, it, uh, I'm guessing, is this the gas style, I think, then, basically? So this little lip here sits in this ring here and it stops this from sort of moving anywhere. We've then got our quick change spring system with the wiring coming out the back of the gearbox there. So I'm just gonna, mm, I bet it's flatter, let's have a look. that unwinds unscrews even so you've got a screw there and then we've got the actual quick change spring system that pushes in twists there goes the spring guy so we've got the same you know as i would expect looks like a cnc sort of spring guide with a bearing on it as well which helps the spring to sort of stay uncoiled there's our spring on this occasion this one's a, a linear spring not a non-linear spring uh, and then that means the compression's gone out of there. I'm not overly keen on the air nozzle itself, the, the white plastic. I'm sure it's been tested thoroughly to work properly, but a little, I would have liked sort of maybe a little bit better looking plastic, but I'm sure it's totally fine. Uh, I've also noticed that we've got a little bit of radiusing going on here where they've sort of hollowed out around the corners so that the cylinder's not um, basically causing issues and stress is issues against the gearbox. And as you can see here, I, it's looking like there's some reinforcements going off around these corners as well with these bumps to basically reinforce that gearbox so they, they're making sure that this is absolutely rock solid next thing i'm going to do i'm going to have to take this um, bolt release out so you just need a small screwdriver and we're just going to push on that and fire it out so that was just a little pin with teeth on it. Hopefully you can see that. You've got little teeth on it and the teeth were on the back side here. So I've pushed it out that way. So that now, if I push down on this little metal catch here, that should mostly release my bolt catch and it's little pin. And there comes the rest of the bolt catch. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold that down and two little springs, okay, and we're just going to unwind that and that releases it from there. There's the button and the spring. Next, we're going to take the uh, pistol grip off. Base plate with a nice, big adjustable screw, I like that. 
So the red terminal on this occasion is at the back and both wires have come up the back of the pistol grip. There's our motor, quite a nice uh, looking motor. And as you can see, the red wire has come into the pistol grip at the front and gone round the back and come up this side of the pistol grip and the black has come straight up out of the back. So we'll get rid of these. So I'm really hoping that this isn't gonna be one where I have to unscrew the selector to get it out. I'm hoping it, it'll just come out easier than that. But we've got the trigger pin and we've got the rear body pin to take out. So the trigger pin came out on the left side. The little teeth are on this left hand side. The body pin, I'm hoping it's like the first front pin. It is, it's on a retaining pin. So now the gearbox, famous last words. Uh, it's gonna be one of them ones, okay. So we're gonna have to remove the selector. So to remove this then, I'm using a number two bit, hex bit. And I'm gonna be really careful to not lose the little ball bearing or whatever inside. And there it went. There it is, managed to retain it. Make sure you keep hold of that, because you will need it. Otherwise, your selector won't click into place. And then now it should nicely come out. So in theory, this could have the um, VFC style uh, ambidextrous selectors. I don't like them personally, but you know, each to their own and all that kind of stuff. So that selector then just sits in that little gap like that. And uh, Stuck under that. We'll look at positioning that when we get back uh, to reassembly. On the other side then, On the other side then, the um, bolt catch basically sits in this. It's uh, obviously then a slightly unique body. I've never seen this before. So this plate doesn't attach to the gearbox at all. It sits in here with the two little springs down in each of these little runners here, which I'll remind you as we're reassembling to show you how that's gone, gone back in. So that's not too bad, that's quite easy. So now we're down to the gearbox then. Um, a little bit different. It looks absolutely solid. It's sort of like immaculately clean for a gearbox to be honest. I can see a little bit of grease underneath here, which is not a bad thing. Uh, so let's get this open. You've got a metal style uh, selector. It's not a U, it's not a traditional style selector. It's based on a traditional M4 selector, but that's quite uh, unique as a selector. So let's get this open and have a look. Now, I've removed everything apart from whatever this thing is, but that's got threads inside it. That looks like it's just sat in there and it must be really well put together because it doesn't seem to want to separate. We go so we've got it open in the end so it turns out basically the stick <laughs> the sticker was overpowering me basically uh, and keeping it in there so um let's have a look inside here then let's finish turning that around there we go so we've got ooh, that's well in there we have got a full metal tooth piston in there. We have got excellent air compression with the air nozzle on. 
we've got single o-ring cylinder head which is obviously working very very well move that back to the front there just take the tappet plate off typical m4 style tappet plate excellent air compression really really impressed with that the gear set looks you know normal good quality there is a good effort by the looks of it to shim it as well there's definitely shims on everything so i would assume it's quite well shimmed in terms of what's in here then this has disappointed me a little bit that we've got a different trigger based system in here we've got a micro switch now i'm not necessarily saying that a micro switch is bad you know it it works really really well in their ak series and stuff but that's a non-standard space so if you're going to fit a gate tighten in there you you're probably going to have to do a hell of a lot of modding and you're going to have to look at the selector plate and stuff like that so it's not going to be easy to get a gate tighten in there but what is in here is you know absolutely rock solid and so well built um i would say i'm pretty sure it's 18 one gear set um you've got your micro switch you've got a cut off lever underneath we'll have a look it's really nicely greased you've got a non-standard cutoff lever in there as well to uh, trigger the uh, um, cutoff obviously when single shot happens possibly gone for a design that's a little bit more reliable because at times the cutoff lever can be a little bit dodgy about cutting off in time and things like that um, so you know what they've done is obviously towards sort of making sure that it's working nicely as it should work which is the single shot the full auto and, and things um, you know, the safety, make sure I don't lose that, is an actual physical block in there. And by the looks of it, it's unwinding the gearbox as well. That looked a bit like it unwound the gearbox. Um, so you've got physical safety that physically blocks the trigger as well. Um, I'm pretty impressed, to be honest. Um, a little bit off, off spec, as we say, but that's not, you know, the worst thing in the world. Um, there is a little bit of a nick in there where the, the sort of shrouding of the wire's obviously just been caught a little bit by the um, the spring or whatever. So I just need to make sure that I keep that nice and neat and protected uh, away from it. I might uh, slide a little bit of heat shrink up there in a minute. In fact, I will do actually. I'll slide a bit of heat shrink up and melt it on just to protect that little bit of nick in. But I'm pretty impressed with that in general. So I'm just going to sort that out and then we'll continue our reassembly. On second looks, it's actually totally fine. It's just sort of just a, a, a dent in the outer sheath and it's not actually exposed. So then we're gonna crack on with the reassembly. So I've got the piston in the cylinder. I've got the air nozzle and tap it on like that. And I've got the spring on. I'm gonna make sure that the teeth are sort of looking like that. So they're sort of sitting like in a line with the, uh, with the tap it plate. We're gonna put the spring on this peg here at the front. So that's most in place. So I've got the spring on this peg here. I've pushed it all the way down. I've got the piston is sat in its tracks now. And I'm just making sure that the cylinder is clicked in position. And it is. And the cylinder head, there's a hole here and the hole on the other side there sat on uh, its peg that it should be sat on. That's fine. I've moved the gears round sort of the teeth for the piston are underneath uh, and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to lift this gear out and put the anti-reversal latch back in because if i don't it makes an awful noise and won't work properly so anti-reversal latch little spring Just hooks around there, like that. Sits in the shell on this one, like that. I'm 
and uh, I basically just pulled it open and pushed it down with my thumb just to keep it open while I dropped the gear in and then I've sort of wound the gear on a little bit until it's clicked and then wound it back so it's sort of pushing against each other to keep each other in. So the next thing I can do then is I can just get the side of the gear back, back on. What I have got though is I've got this to put back in um, which is going to sit right there. Just lift that up to show you. So it sits in there, there's like a little space for it there. I assume that's for something to screw in via the um, sling loop on a, a different model. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the top half of the gearbox in. And I'm just going to wiggle that about a little bit. I know that the tappy plate had jumped slightly up onto the top of the sector gear. So I just pushed the air nozzle back and that just moves the tappy plate back. And then that's gone back just about flush. Just waiting for the, uh, the cylinder head to uh, click in its place. There we go. Managed to do it at that time with very little uh, swearing off camera. So got it back together. So I'm gonna screw that back together now. I've made sure to keep the screws in exactly the right place and order. So I know exactly where they've come from, just in case they were any different to normal. You know, make sure you do the same. So, just looking around and I think we're all right. I think we're ready to progress to the next level. So I'm gonna drop this back in here. I'm gonna take that bolt release out for now. Uh, I'm gonna start the reassembly. So we've just dropped the body in. I'm just gonna put the rear body pin in A little bit fiddly, but just had to tap it in and it came in. I've got the front trigger pin, uh, the trigger pin even. Get that in place, perfect. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be very delicate and put in the selector back. So we've got this tiny little, looks like a little arrowhead that is what causes the click of the selector. And it sits in there, just like that, and this, now is when I've remembered, good timing to remember, that I have not put the selector back in. So let's do that now. So I'm gonna start with safe. I'm gonna put that in there. I'm pretty certain that's gonna be the safe position because that matches up with that. So I'm gonna drop that back in there And I can see now that I've got it already, got it lined up. Put that pin in. Put that pin in. Got my selector again. Put the little thing in. And I'm going to be very careful about putting this in place. Make sure it's underneath. I can feel the springiness. Bring in my number two bit. Tighten that down. And I can see down the side of the gearbox here that the selector is moving and I can feel it's on safe. Semi, auto, perfect. We can uh, progress a little bit further. So next thing I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna reinsert the spring go I'm going to bring the spring guide back in and I'm just going to push it in and once it's in it's going to get a quarter twist and then it comes back flush with the back of the gearbox there and then I've got my thumb screw here if you've got a long a very long um, 
I'll turn that down actually a little bit. If you've got a very long flathead screwdriver, you can effectively do this without even removing um, the stock tube at all if you didn't want to. So next I'm going to slide that back up and that back in. I am sure there's going to be something I'm going to realise in a minute that I've not done, but it's okay. Pull the connector off there. And then the stock tube just screws in. In theory, I didn't even need to take this off, I don't think. It will only go so far, so I'm going to bring it back around so that that can drop in. And then I'm going to screw that in. Get the uh, Amra's wrench or grips if you've not got one of them. I'm just going to tighten that back down. There we go, nice and tight, and we've got a centralised tight uh, buffer tube with our spring back in and everything. So <clears throat> I did put the stock tube on and noticed an issue that basically if you screw it in too far and you're not paying attention, you're basically just stripping the protection off here, which is going to cause shorts out uh, and issues. So what I did is I removed the connector, I've put heat shrink on each of the wires separately and then I put a new sheathing over the top of all of that so it's now effectively um, extra protected. So when you are putting the stock tube back on, please be very careful about screwing it in so that you don't mash these wires. Now, ideally, there would have been some element of sort of protection in here that would have held them um, in place, basically away from um, the stock tube catching them. But for whatever reason, that's not there. So we're just gonna have to obviously be aware of that uh, as as an issue. Slide that in, and this time I'm going to make sure that I am being quite careful. And what I'm going to do is I'm looking down this gap down in here to see the wiring, make sure it's not getting munched up. So far, it's fine. Now I'm getting to here. And I'm starting to think I'm going to crush it any second. So I'm just going to leave it there. If I go too far, you know, I could go much further. I can feel there it's starting to nip a little bit. So I'm going to unwind back to where I can push the, the uh, sling plate in, which obviously it's in its little uh, track there that's stopping it going anywhere. So now that's in a nice stable position. I'm then going to get the castle nut, tighten that down with my hands first. And then I'm going to get whatever tool I've got available. In there, in my case, an armourer's wrench. This is an old star one, which uh, star the company became Aries, I believe, in the end. And tighten that down so that's nice and solid. I can see that the, the wires are all right in there. So we can finally move on. The next thing we do is while I'm here, I'm going to drop the selector in. So the selector in that side, the spring. And the button in the other side and then what I'm going to do is push the button down onto the selector so it comes back out the other side and then you basically screw the selector back down into the button if you line it up right there we go a little bit more Obviously you can sort of adjust how far that button comes out. But ideally, there we go. You want the button and the um, other side of the selector to basically be flush with one another like that. Ideally, and uh, I can see that there's still plenty of room in there to release the mags out. Next thing then, I'm gonna drop in this little um, catch as well. So I'm gonna put one spring down one side, one spring down the other side. This is quite fiddly. And then this is gonna drop down as well. Looks like it goes that way, in there like that. So just to show you, it's there, in there like that. And then gonna put this in from the other side. I'm going to look, I'm going to hold that in with my finger. I'm going to look in here in the magwell. And I'm going to basically, what I've done is, you, you 
can't tell very well, unfortunately, but this this comes through under and up the side of the gearbox a little bit and it basically hooks in. So now, if I'm pressing the button on the other side, you can see that's springing up and down. So that's in the right place. And then I'm gonna put the little bolt, the little uh, pin back in there for it. Just positioning it up. There we go, I'm gonna push that back in. Might need to uh, tap it in with something. So that's tapped back in now. We can get the pistol grip back on. It's nice that the uh, screws have actually stayed retained in there for once. So don't forget the red wire should come into the front of the pistol grip. The black wire should come in the back. Position should seat that down. I'm going to screw these two screws in. So the screws, as we usually find with an AR, are top left here and bottom right down here. Screw that in. Make sure they're tight. Obviously you don't have to be the Hulk to uh, get these in. So the red wire then is gonna come back to this corner here and make sure it comes out of the way of the motor, a hole where the pinion gear goes down in. It's gonna bring the motor in so the red terminal is gonna be at the back. Drop your motor in, make sure it's springy, which it is. Put the red terminal on, that's one. Black terminal on, that's another. And we can bring the base plate in. Just make sure that those wires are not getting nipped anywhere, they're not sitting anywhere that they're gonna get caught and damaged. Can be, that bit can be fiddly, just sort of getting wires in a good place to not cause you any issues. But the base, so the base, uh, pistol grip base should go flush basically with the pistol grip. In this one, we've got a shorter screw that goes at the front. That's tight. We've got a longer one that goes to the back. There we go, that's the pistol grip on. Just checking those wires are all right, not nipped anywhere. They look fine. So at this stage now, you can test it if you want to make sure it works. Guess what Fez forgot to do? Mm. So, tested it, it did work, but I forgot to put the uh, securing uh, bolt in the back of the uh, QD system, but this has had the added benefit that it means that I can actually just check and see that the wires are not crimped at all this time. Uh, so I know that my sort of checking system, uh, the way that I've done it a little bit more carefully this time, has been significantly better. So now I can screw that back in. And I know that I need to be quite careful and about at this point, more or less, if we go any further, I can feel the nip. So I'm gonna come back a little bit. And there we go. Skew that down. Get, we're getting there slowly but surely. So the lower's fully assembled. We just need the stock going on. So I'm going to feed that back in there. I'm going to put the end cap back on. That's 
the end cap done. Before we do the upper back on, I'm gonna bring the rail back in. Now it's got a securing lug on either side just to get it in the right place. The uh, nuts go on one side, the bolts on the other. There are predetermined cutouts for these to sit in, so you, you can't really get it wrong, to be honest. Just make sure that the uh, rail unit sits pushed back against the body. Bring back in my number four bit, and I'm gonna tighten the first one down. I'm keeping the rail unit pushed back against the receiver while I tighten that down. That's already got tight. Get the other nut and bolt in there. Tighten that down. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the O-ring and the cap back on there. I'm gonna bring the muzzle brake back in. And tighten that down. I'm gonna get that back round to more or less squared off flat, which is good enough there. I'm gonna bring my Torx 6 back in, and tighten the grub screw back in. Which I've done. And then we can slide the barrel and hop assembly back in there, which I've made sure that I've turned the hop all the way back off. Make sure the springs on there, it should be nice and springy. Make sure that you've pushed your front body pin out. Push them together, body pin back in, might need a good tap. There we go. And all that's remaining is to put the stock back on. So there we go, we've done that. Um, the solidness of the internals is absolutely exceptional. It's really solid in line with their AKs. You know, I was impressed with that before. Uh, their AKs are sort of really rock solid. So I'm really, really happy with that. Um, the sort of micro switch lets me down a little bit just because if I wanted to put a tighten in there or something like that, it does let me down. It does make things a little bit more difficult. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But it, it's a nothing. You can still put in um, any of the other wired in MOSFETs, such as like uh, the Murph, the Perun, uh, AB++ would be perfect for this as well. That can be still wired onto that MOSFET and things. Um, but robustly, it's absolutely rock solid. You know, These are typically coming out of the box, brand new from the factory at 400 FPS. And I have no doubt that they would have no issues with that whatsoever. Um, so I'm pretty impressed with the, the solidness of that build. Uh, I hope that's helped. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that. Please don't uh, forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if you do want to be a member, I would massively appreciate that. If you do sign up for membership, please tell me as well uh, so I can thank you uh, because it means a lot to me when people do it. So I will see you next time. Bye.